Hi, everybody. Hello from Madison. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to take a minute, and I'm, I'm actually just going to do the uh, presentation from Google+. Plus. I don't have any slides or anything like that. So while I'm switching over, uh, just to kind of warn you all, since it's my Google+, Plus, I can't really say what exactly is going to be waiting for us there. There could be some crazy stuff, so hopefully it's nobody, nobody's offended by my politics or anything like that. So, um, And also, uh, while I'm bringing the chat over here so I can see if there's anything going on, um, just a show of hands, who all has uh, used Plus already? Okay, so we got a few people, it looks like. Four. Awesome. Well, so you'll what you'll see is is quite a bit like Facebook, but it's a little bit different. And people are saying that that it could be uh, pretty game changing uh, for education. So um, I'm going to start out with a quote. And you can see this is just like uh, posting a status update. I'm logged into plus.google.com. Um, it's, uh, one of the writers for Ars Technica blog, I kind of like, um, opened up an article about Google Plus by saying, if you're a stranger who follows me on Google Plus, you might think I rarely use the service. And we're going to talk about why that is. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share this publicly. So you'll notice right away, uh, one of the things I'm doing is right away when you post, every single time you post, you need to choose who exactly you want to be able to see that post. Uh, it can be public, it can be individuals, and it can be what they call circles. And we'll get into those quite a bit later. That, and the circles are actually the things that, that kind of get um, people pretty excited about it. Um, also, just like Facebook, you can share images. They're tied in with Picasa videos, you know, say from YouTube or something like that, or a link, or even uh, kind of check in at, at your location. For now, I'm going to go ahead and share that post. And it's public, so, so everybody can see that. Um, so just another point that I already kind of made, that you can choose a circle individuals, or, and this one's kind of weird because you have to know the word public is public. Boom, right? And I'm going to go ahead and post that comment. And so, really, if you're commenting on something that's sort of determined by the person who's originally sharing um, the post, so you get a lot of control over just who it is that you're speaking to. You saw that when I first made that post, it remembered that I uh, was sharing with my politics group. So I'm trying to take a lot of my stuff out of Facebook where I probably am annoying people, and, and same with Twitter. Something else that you can do, um, there's this little drop down menu here that gives you a lot of different options as well. You can edit, delete, um, but some of the really powerful ones are you can disable comments or disable reshare. So say I made that private post and it's just going to that one group and I don't want it spread outside of that group. By using this drop down menu, um, I can make it so that it, it really stays within that group and, and doesn't leave. So again, if you're careful about things, you can really, um, keep things pretty private, which if you know anything about Facebook, they basically th are on record saying we think every everything should be public. So um, Google's kind of taken a different um, a different approach. Exactly, it has to share with you unless it's public. So I'm using comments as my PowerPoint bullets, if you couldn't tell. So anybody who's following me is, is getting that as a live feed. Something else you'll notice here, there at the options uh, underneath, there's plus one, and there's share, and then comment. Obviously, comment is comment. Um, but plus one is basically Google's answer to Facebook's like button. You might have noticed if you're logged into Google and you're doing a search, there's a plus one for every result. You've probably seen it um, at blogs as well. Um, the thing to remember about plus one is that it's public. So you're publicly saying, hey, this is great. I like it. Um, Yay, go whatever that post is. Um, share, on the other hand, would be if I wanted to repost something. So 
Um, say I like this post down here um, about Google and Motorola, I could say share, and then I'm basically resharing that post. And here again, I get those controls over um, who I would who I want to share that post with. So if I wanted to share it with my colleagues, I, I could do that and and go ahead and add more people. If I wanted to share it with my acquaintances, I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I can. You can actually add on multiple people, or um, even if you want to add individuals, you can do that as well, which is, is kind of fun. I, I was playing with that over the weekend, and it was almost like texting. You know, if you're emailing links back and forth, you can start um, instead using plus to send it to individuals. And if, if they've got the smartphone app, it'll just, um, it'll just uh, buzz their phone, and, and away they go. It's almost like texting. So I mentioned the plus ones. Um, where the plus ones show up? Uh, oh, actually, before I do that, I want to make a note. So plus one is public. Share is by circle. We'll just say that. And then you notice if I also wanted to mention somebody kind of uh, along similar to the lines of, of Facebook, um, I can start, start typing and I'll see, I can start seeing some of my colleagues if I type a plus, kind of similar to the at. I just wigged out my browser. Oh, so yeah, for now, if you want to get in on Plus, they, they do have invites. So um, I've got 150. I've got plenty. So if uh, people are needing, needing invites, um, I'm sure we have enough to go around. And hopefully my browser comes back here. So... Sorry about that. Kind of a kludgy way to do this, but hopefully it works. So yeah, maybe we can send uh, send requests for invites to the list. The the other catch that's going uh, on now is is it's only limited to your Gmail address. So you've got to have a Google account already, and you've got to be kind of comfortable with um, that integration. And it it sort of tempts you to stay logged into Google all the time. You'll see um, if I opened up a Google search. Uh, it brings my plus stuff right along the top. If I had any notifications, they would show up here. If I wanted to easily share something, I could do that right from the menu up here at the top. So it's really, I, I, but my kind of my theory on why is Google doing this, why are they taking on Facebook, is they really want to get people to stay on Google. Usually people go to Google, they search, and then they leave, and, and then they're you know, possibly losing income. So that's, uh, they're, they're really trying to get people to stay on Google. So anyway, back to plus ones. Where do plus ones show up? They show up on your profile. So here's me. Um, here's my posts. I haven't plus one too many things, but it shows up there as well as buzz, if anybody actually used that. Um, and if you need, you can add a lot of different information um, to your profile, but there's one limitation. Right now, um, Google is doing something a little bit controversial in, in that they're enforcing everybody to use their real name in their profile. So that means no um, industries or institutions, so no university plus profiles, no aliases. So that really brings in some privacy concerns. I know people, you know, especially in a place like China, are, are especially concerned about that. But that's, as far as education goes, you sort of need to be comfortable, um, you know, sticking with your real name. Um, didn't Facebook do that at first? That's a good question. I think. I know they required your email address to be verified, you know, from an EDU, but I don't remember. I remember just kind of digging back in my memory, but I seem to remember people kind of playing around with names and picking funny names and changing them every fairly often. I think Google is enforcing something like a 30-day limit on how often you can actually go um, change your name. So I'm going to go ahead and say... That's another major point. No aliases, no institutions when you're talking about your profile. So let's talk about circles. Um, you'll notice circles are, are kind of a 
really neat interface wise and, and, and that's something that a lot of people have said is really what's making um, the privacy controls in Google work really well is that they are um, they're, they're just really designed well and it actually was one of the Mac original Macintosh engineers, this guy here, Andy Hertzfeld, that um, worked with Google to really design it and make it neat and like if you add, if I drag somebody new to something it'll um, add a little plus one if I take them out, I think it does smoke or something like that. So it's it's kind of cute, but it actually um, works really well and it makes it really intuitive to see, oh, okay, well, I'm hovering over following, I can see all of those people I'm following. So some of those visual cues help you to sort of realize, okay, I'm okay as far as privacy goes. I'm not sharing something with somebody that I, I'm not intending to. Um, one uh, researcher uh, posted a, uh, uh, something about, about PLUS and they said that they uh, anticipate that they'll have a circle for every lab. So by doing that, they're going to have, or excuse me, not every lab, but every project in their lab. So that's going to give that particular researcher a way to share things with each individual project and the right people within that. So in some ways it's like an email list, but it's right in your browser, it's right in Google, it's right, you know, with that group of people that um, you want to share with. And there's other ways that you can connect with people that we'll talk about in a little bit um, here as well. But, you know, you can sort of see by the, um, by the different categories I've got that it's, it's, um, it's sort of a way to really control, basically, I guess, basically what, who you're sharing things with. Um, it's, it's not too much more complicated than that. Um, the following one's kind of interesting. It's a little bit, to me, like, uh, like Twitter. So, you know, these are people that I don't really expect to get my posts, but, you know, I'm interested in what they have to say. So, um, uh, other, other people in education are, are talking about circles and just the fact that they, you know, quote unquote, change everything. Um, it really, another way to look at it is that it really, by having these circles, it's putting privacy at the center. It's every post, everything you do, you're posting intentionally to a circle. So you don't have to make that same friend connection as you do with, um, on Facebook, so it's really, it's a little bit more looser connection. You're, you're focusing more on the communication than the relationship like you do uh, in Facebook. So, ha, ah, Dave Schrader, awesome. So, um, this to me is another one of the great big things about PLUS is that circles are a looser relationship than uh, friend. So you don't have to friend your students. That's actually one of the bigger appeals um, to PLUS. I hope J Dave is enjoying the stream here. If anybody has questions, feel free to chime in. I don't feel the, the need to kind of yammer on and on. I, I, I'm sort of getting, getting towards the home stretch and I'm hoping that we can have a little bit of conversation. There's, since I'm guessing most of us have used Facebook and used Twitter, hopefully you're seeing some of the similarities um, between this and, and, and those things. That's true. So you, Facebook actually is, is starting to change that and, in that they've created their, their groups and that's sort of their way to um, make it easier to share things with people that you're not necessarily friends with. So I think both are are realizing it and kind of moving moving in, in that direction. Um, they just sort of have different takes on privacy and I think a lot of instructors are, are liking, liking the plus model. Although I, I recently joined a Facebook group that's kind of under the new model and I can see how it's, it's kind of powerful. You can, it's almost Twitter-like, it's so public. Okay, so the other big deal about plus, hangouts and huddles. So, uh, a Hangout, uh, if you're familiar with um, Skype and Facebook, um, Facebook recently or sometime in the near future is going to integrate Skype so that you can do face-to-face vi -face video chat. Um, Google has it right out of the box and they call it a Hangout. So I'm going to try starting a Hangout and hopefully this doesn't really make, uh, hopefully it doesn't make, uh, hey, okay, everybody see me? Oh, nobody's here right now. That's okay. So Hangouts are basically a way to um, get people together to do a video chat or you can do sort of just chat like I am 
or you can even all watch a YouTube video at the same time synchronously, which is kind of neat. So you're all having the same experience and able to talk about the same thing at the same time. So, hey, we got Dave. <laughs> So one of the limitations of this is that you saw Dave just joined the group, and I didn't really have any control over that. So, hey, Dave. So it's it's really sort of informal. I mean, it's public. I'm inviting everybody in my circles um, if I want to, and people can come, they can go, um, whatever it might be, just sort of willy-nilly. Um, you might have read recently in the New York Times that uh, somebody, oop, is there a question? Does Dave know we're all seeing him? Uh, let's see if I can type. Oh, I'm going to leave. Oh, it's not letting me type, surprisingly. Oh, I don't. Know. Are you able to hear me, Dave? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to type and it's not working. So you're being broadcast to Wisconsin. Say hi to the system schools. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to drop out. We'll talk to you sometime soon. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Okay, now it tells everybody that I just hung out with Dave, so that's that's kind of neat. Um, so you saw, like, I, I didn't really have any control over whether he would accept an invite or anything like that. He just sort of dropped in. Um, and that actually came up as one of the limitations from um, some people who were teaching a cooking class via Hangouts uh, in New York. So they basically thought, well, hey, this video chat's kind of cool, and a lot of people started following them as individuals on Plus, so they decided to actually have hour-long cooking classes um, as a Hangout. And, and they thought it was kind of distracting to have people sort of pop in and pop out. Uh, but for something like an office hour, uh, it actually might work really, really well. Um, you know, as long as you're okay having that connection on your um, your personal Google account, um, uh, you know, it's that it's something that I think a lot of faculty are starting to see as a big um, a big uh, plus for plus. So. Just say hangouts are where it's at for office hours. And we'll say thanks to Dave too. <clears throat> so that's all the major functions. There's a few other little things, but all the main things that I sort of wanted to cover. Um, if you didn't catch on to some of the, the cautions and, and things like that, just to sort of watch out for some of the gotchas. Um, obviously, it's in the cloud, so we're sort of dependent on Google. There's no real open standard or anything like email standards or anything like that. We're sort of at their mercy for what they're going to do with this tool. Um, and also, without the use of any kind of aliases, you possibly have some FERPA issues. You know, you can't really, I would say, at least as it is now, you can't force your students um, to really do anything on, on PLUS. I mean, I suppose if they're just following you, they're, you're not really displaying the fact that the students are following you. It's not like it has um, in Twitter where there's the following list. It's a little bit more anonymous that way, but it still is a little bit kind of hazy in that way, at least to me. <clears throat> and then the last thing, and this is the thing that kind of bugs me. I mean, I was using PLUS a lot over the weekend, and there's not a lot of people there. And there's not a lot of activity. So thing, you know, you're, you're sort of, right now it's sort of like you're talking to yourself. But just like uh, I opened with, if you're a stranger who follows me on Google+, you might think I rarely use a service. It's possible that all these people I, I follow are really using it a lot. They're just sharing it within circles. So things aren't happening publicly. They're not, um, they're not things that um, I'm necessarily going to see. So the fact that there's not a lot of activity doesn't mean that people aren't using it. I'm hoping that that lack of activity isn't something that are, are going to make people kind of shy away from it, but um, we'll see. 
So yeah, kind of like Google Wave, and is it still in beta? I, I think it's a lot like Wave. Um, I think actually kind of hope that they build in some more of the functionality. And I know Wave, they try to do, um, you know, model it like a service. I, I sort of hope that they do that um, with this, but but we'll see. And is it still in beta? I I believe the answer is yes, since it's still um, still by um, by invitation only. I'm, I'm assuming that it's. Uh, that it, they would still consider beta, although they didn't label it that way, which is kind of surprising. Something else I didn't mention is, is that the, the uptake on this has been incredibly fast. They opened it, you know, over a weekend, and then, you know, by the next Monday, it was like millions of people. It, there was a story going around that when they rolled it out to Google employees, they did the same model where people could invite other people in, and within a couple of days, like three quarters of the staff were all using Plus. So it's 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 really got a lot of uh, uptake, but um, possibly only with people who are really into technology. So that could be another um, chance for a limitation. So I guess that's my final parting question. I'm not sure of the answer yet. Is it a game changer? I kind of hope so. I sort of like it better than Facebook, but that's just me. Any other thoughts or questions? Boy, Loner, you're right. This is a quiet bunch. I don't know. Something's in the air. Nobody's talking today. It's the water. Must be. <laughs> well, I yeah, it's Monday. I yeah. think that's right. So this is very good, uh, uh, John. Um, it was very helpful the first time I used it, and uh, thanks so much. Yeah, try it out, everybody. I, I, I appreciate the chance to show it to you. So I have a Google Plus account. Somebody invited me, and I just say, OK. And I never really touched it uh, much. So if I get into my Google Plus account, how do I find how do I find people? I guess and in terms of I know there's a find button. Uh, yeah, but I, didn't I don't really go and befriend it. Yeah, I, I didn't really cover that a whole lot. So um, they suggest a few people that you can know. But if I wanted to look for you, I'd just go to the circles, find people. And I've got you on a, a Gmail, but it's not coming up. Um, otherwise, there we go. I bet that's this is maybe no nope, University of Chicago. Uh, I don't know which one is me. So I, I thought I loaded the profile picture. And this is me. That's you. Because I know these people. You do know these people. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, Chris is the one who invited me. Uh -huh. but, I but I didn't do any profile and all that thing, so nobody knows who I am at this point. I need to. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'll yeah, upload, upload a picture and that, and then people will be able to find you a little bit more easily. <laughs> I thought I did actually, but of course I don't remember. <laughs> You know, John, I have a question. I just did a search on you and nothing comes up. And I'm going to find people. Ah. Well, for one thing, the, the, without the P throws a lot of people off. And then I throw people off with my lack of a face on my profile. Hopefully that helps a little bit. I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't looked for other John Thompson's. I'll be honest, I haven't looked for other John Thompson's. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there are a few. It looks like there are a few. So if I, if I find you, if I find you, John, will I be able to find all your people on your circle? Like all these uh, academic technology people? Uh, how, do they, how do I associate? Let's so if on. you um, actually I haven't done a whole lot of that, uh, what we've done in our department is basically uh -huh. share um, Gmail addresses. But you can see uh -huh. who are in my circles by just going to my profile and saying you all, and you get a little. I get a little bit more data okay. since it's uh, my own profile, but I can see some of the UW people here. Okay.
I would definitely need to work on it and a lot more to get familiar with it. <laughs> it's not too tough once you get going. Mhm. Mm okay. Well, thank you, John. It helps me to understand the system. That's good. good. I'm glad. Uh, good luck, everybody. Mm -hmm.